Got it. All right. Oh, man. Bending. Okay. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. This one's backwards. Hold on. I need to wash the dishes more. Tell you one thing. These look more real than the ones in X Men Origins Wolverine did. Did you know I had to dress up for the final Wolverine movie starring Hugh Jackman because. I had this. I was looking at his outfit. And I'm like, I got the same outfit. I got butter knives, just like everybody else. Only this time, I actually showed you what everybody else goes through while trying to set up for a fucking video, and that's trying to put these things through your fists. Anyways, here is my review for Hugh Jackman's final outing as our favorite X Man in the entire franchise, and joining him in the proper send off is Patrick Stewart as Professor Xavier. I gotta take these things off. They're really distracting. He's joined by Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier once again, as well as this mysterious little girl named Laura, played by Daphne Keene. Oh my god, there's a starlet name right there, if there ever was one. Daphne Keene. And they all come together in the film Logan, directed by James Mangold, who did the Wolverine. And after he did that, he felt like maybe he needed to make uh, the character, uh, give the character a bit, a, a better justice than that, than just that movie, because he wanted that original film to be rated R. But there were always studio interference, 20th Century Fox. Finally, the success of Deadpool allowed for Mangold and Hugh Jackman and other people involved to finally treat Wolverine with respect, give him the proper film that he deserves, not only for it to be his last film, but even if this wasn't his last film, they wanted to make the the quintessential Wolverine film. And usually, the, the quintessential story for a Logan-centered uh, uh, story, whether it be in the comics or in the movie, it has to be rated R because that's the nature of the character. That's the savagery and the tor torment that his character always has always gone through. So they needed to write that kind of tone and that kind of atmosphere into Logan. So it was a dead giveaway that this movie needed to be rated R. And the story is about Logan and Xavier living on the Mexican border and trying to find a better life, hopefully one on the ocean, away from everybody, away from all this bullshit, especially when all that bullshit is wrapped around a tragic event that involved all of the previous X-Men that are no longer around, but then things change when X-23 aka Laura comes into the picture along with these people that are after her and it's up to Logan to hopefully make things right for it being that he told by Xavier still has time to bring atonement to his life that this long life that he's been living this entire time and that's ultimately where the heart of the story is is and why this movie is perfect to capture that story because Logan out of all the X-Men were was always the most tragic one was always the one that we can always relate to and kind of gr gravitate towards because this guy can heal this guy can live for a, a long amount of time and on paper that sounds awesome that sounds cool that you can regenerate that you can live for hundreds of years if if there was anything to come out of the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie that everybody shits upon is that there's a couple of little things within Wolverine's lore that was actually planted in that film. And one of the th more enjoyable parts was actually the beginning uh, opening montage that shows Logan as well as Sabretooth going through these time periods and seeing how long he has lived. See, he's been born since the 1700s and he's had he has literally lived in every single war and he has seen some really fucked up shit since then. So when you put it into that context, Context, you know that living a long life like that and being able to regenerate and self-heal doesn't necessarily sound so peachy because you witness everybody that you loved and care about just die all around you. So it, it, existentially the theme about this movie is Logan coming to terms that yeah maybe dying is not such a bad thing. But he needs to make right with the people around him before he finally goes in a selfish manner. And that's ultimately where the compelling nature of his character lies. That's what makes this movie so great. And that's why Man Mangold, uh, James Mangold, as well as the writers and Hugh Jackman himself, with his performance, they were able to capture that very well. I'll go as far as to say that maybe the writing as well as the acting by Hugh Jackman and maybe the film itself could be Oscar caliber if it wasn't for the superhero nature behind it. That w and also because this movie is coming out so early 
in the year, then maybe the Academy won't necessarily pay that much attention to it by year's end, except for maybe some of the cinematography, because there's some shots in this movie that's so beautiful with the way it's lit up, the way that the set design looks, especially with Logan walking into that fallen water tower that he keeps Xavier in, and just overall it, it capturing the landscape as well as the way that the film kind of uh, it pulls these focus pulls. I, I don't know, maybe it's just the film geek inside of me, but I noticed that an awful lot, there's there's a way that some lenses and some, some focus is used in this movie that makes me think that maybe this movie was shot on film, and if it was, man, you guys used it very effectively, because from the get-go, uh, James Mangold and Hugh Jackman stated that this movie was going to harken back a little bit to like an old-school western, only with the superhero vibe, with the X-Men vibe integrated into it, and it, they definitely pulled that off with not only the cinematography, but also with the, the way that the story kind of unfolds with this character who kind of is like the lone survivor that doesn't want anything to do with anybody, but eventually he's going to come to terms with his past and also come to terms with his present that's going to hopefully make things right. And just because I said Hugh Jackman is Oscar caliber doesn't mean that his supporting cast isn't. Charles Xavier, played by Patrick Stewart, he is phenomenal. He's the best that he's been as this character in this entire time. No matter how much screen time he has in this movie, he is he just nails it out of the park. And there was one scene that he performs in that almost brought me to tears. I'm like, no, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Charlie Hearts! And then breakout star Daphne Keene as X-23. Whew. She's gonna give Eleven from Stranger Things a run for her money. All right, it's being, it's, it's turning into a good a kind of renaissance for child actors from not only Eleven but also various kids from the Stranger Things cast to now uh, Daphne Keene as Laura Kinney aka X-23 who is not only phenomenal as a character writing wise and is also cool in her little action scenes, uh, action scenes where uh, overall the action scenes in this movie are spectacular especially when they take advantage of that brutal R rating but it never becomes grotesque and over the top it, it's treated in a very visceral but somewhat beautiful way where the gore and the violence is done in a way that's very sharp, no pun intended, but it's sharp and very akin to the choreo choreography and the cinematography, and again, a kind of c c complements the character, because everybody else uses guns, uh, Wolverine and, and X-23 are going to be using their knives, especially when X-23 herself has a few surprises up her sleeve that even Wolverine looks at and goes, holy fuck. But the acting with the writing and the directing is what made this movie... Probably one of the more human superhero films ever, and I think that's kind of embodied in the way that this movie's named. It's named Logan. It's not named Wolverine 3, or the Wolverine does this again. They're trying to stray away from that. Even though he's still got the claws, and he's still got some other superhero antics within this film, it's all about the human that makes up these characters, and what makes them so tragic. And also, what I really loved within the writing was that it didn't necessarily shun those other X-Men movies. Even though it kind of strays away a little bit from the continuity especially when you bring in these comic books that are kind of in, uh, an in joke within the movie that you kind of saw in that last trailer they still manage to find a very subtle way to kind of pay respect to those other movies whether it be a line of dialogues said by Charles Xavier or Logan or something that's hung up on the wall that as soon as I saw it I'm like ah uh, there you go. They're not necessarily disrespecting these other movies, even though they're within their own continuity. They're just going to make sure that these little elements or these little Easter eggs from those previous films do, uh, don't do do any more than simply just flesh out Logan's character more and bring that humanity level to this superhero genre. And that's what made this movie almost a near-perfect superhero film reason why I say near is because I'm about to talk about the things that didn't necessarily quite click with me. And one, if not all of the things that didn't necessarily click, were the villains. I felt like Boyd Holbrook as this uh, character who is has been augmented with a me mechanical arm, and he's leading these uh, uh, these militants that are part of Alkaline Company, Alkaline Industry, Alkali, Alkali, I don't know. They're the ones that are creating these mutant experiments that essentially created X-23. And personally, I thought that they were good villains for Logan and X-23 and Xavier to kind of go up against, but that's all they really were. I didn't think that they were as dimensional as they could have been. They were good foils. Like, I generally hated the guy, especially how smug and overly confident Boyd Holbrook's character, I can't remember his name, but he, how confident he was in his job and how smug he was generally made me want to hate him and made me want to see his ass get kicked later on. But other than that, I didn't see all that much complexity within the character. Not so much with other people that are higher up above him. I don't want to give too much away. And then the movie... <laughs> 
does something. It introduces a little something that you didn't see in the trailers that was kept secret for a very long time and I was surprised it did not leak. But there's something in the movie that I'm a little on the fence on that when it popped up I'm like... This is kind of ironic. I'm not going to give it too much away, but it's a very ironic element considering how this mo one of the running themes in this movie is that Logan constantly reminds X-23 that this is not a comic book, that this is supposed to be real life, and in real life, people die. The movie just added something that's super comic booky that even though it wasn't bad, because of how everything else in the movie is so somber and toned down and realistic and human, this one thing just sticks out incredibly like a sore thumb to me. But to be quite honest, that's where my complaints pretty much end. Because the rest of this movie is just near perfect. Especially with the last shot. Uh, I'm obviously not going to give it away. But the last shot just had me just thinking about the movie more and more. To the brink of going to go see it again eventually. So I'm going to be giving Logan... A low 9 out of 10. It is definitely one of my favorites of the year. And I think there's a couple of things here and there that I would love to rewatch again. Only because there's certain details that I missed that my girlfriend needed to be pointed out. Sometimes I feel like my girlfriend is a bigger nerd than I am. Because I have to turn to her and be like, this is what they mentioned. And this is what happened in between the X-Men movies. Because you heard in the news and you heard Xavier say this or that. But all this compels me to see the movie again. Because it has that, that much lore behind it. And just the performances and the way it's all come together with with the brutal violence and the action scenes that are also just as kick-ass as the more sentimental and emotional stuff, it brings about a movie that is the, just the perfect send-off to send Logan into the sunset. So now I throw it over to you guys. What do you guys think of the Logan film? Do you think it was the perfect send-off for Hugh Jackman as the character? Who would you like to see? I know this is a very tough question because you can't see anybody else as uh, Logan except for Hugh Jackman and anybody else ex uh, except Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. But please, please, please try your best to come up with your best answer as to who you can see step into the shoes. I don't want to say the word replace, but step into the shoes that Hugh Jackman's leave behind for the role of Wolverine in future X-Men properties, whether it be in the films or even as a TV show, because it looks like Fox and Marvel are kind of working together to kind of bring X-Men to the to the smaller screen, because if I feel like better stories could be told in that format through a series, especially if Legion proves to be a success just as it has been so far, because everybody's loving that series. So so please let me know all of your guys' opinions and your choice for the next Wolverine in the comments below. Like and share this video and of course subscribe for future reviews all coming through the month of March from movies to games. And we got so many things to look forward to. But of course one of the things that we'll be uh, holding on to as long as we can is this very special film that marks the end for Hugh Jackman's run as Wolverine. It's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough but... That this legacy will always stay with us. And before I wrap up, do not forget to follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at DarkSputterDavid. And I think that about the... Oh, right! Yes! I don't know if you have noticed, but uh, this video looks a little different. And that's because I got a brand new camera. This is the one thing that I was talking about that that my money that I was going to get on the Switch kind of went towards to. And I'm really, really enjoying this camera. If you guys want to see me review this camera and tell you what it is, tell you all the features and all that kind of stuff, then please feel free to throw out your suggestion in the comments below. Until next time, guys, take care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.